when I'm reading a book of yours, right, I'm thinking now the world seems so unhinged. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a bit older. Um, so unhinged now that I don't think even you could write plots sometimes as amazing. And I want to give you one to test you that's from the papers just last week. Your Labor government decided to give away strategic islands in the Indian Ocean that Britain has owned for 200 years Max. plus. Max. And they've got a critical naval base on them. It's given them away to Mauritius, 200, 2,000 kilometres away, a poor country that's getting close to China. It's like an act of high treason. And the mystery, Geoffrey Archer, is why. Could you have dreamed of that one? Absolute lunacy. Uh, we, we, I don't know what we're playing at or what this Labour government is playing at. That was a, an act of piracy, nothing less. And indeed, the British people are not pleased about it. Uh, don't be... Uh, but your point is a good one. If you wrote stories about what's happening in the world at the moment with what's happening in England, but equally interesting in the United States, what's happening with uh, Trump and Harris, I wouldn't get away with it. No one would believe me. Uh, fi a fact has become far more fiction than fiction. I know. I mean, one of your books might have said one assassination attempt in the election campaign, but two? Come on, you know, pull it back. Look, I just wonder, though, you know, I wonder whether your novels are even more compulsory reading now because this seems to be an age without heroes. I mean, at least in the English-speaking West. I mean, you've got your Prime Minister, Keir Starmer. I mean, seriously, you've got Joe Biden, you've got Justin Trudeau in Canada, and our Anthony Albanese. And you, though, were in politics in the age of Thatcher and Reagan. So have you asked yourself, what on earth has happened? Yes, I do, because I have, as you rightly, kindly pointed out, the great privilege of serving Margaret Thatcher for 13 years. And uh, when she was Prime Minister, Douglas Hurd was Foreign Secretary, and Michael Heseltine was uh, Deputy Prime Minister. And you thought you were in safe hands. You realised you were with competent people. And you look around the world today and you wonder how it can be possible that we have a President of the United States uh, who seems to be completely out of touch, a candidate for the Republican Party, who uh, is just not even ridiculous. He, he, he would be fatal for our country if he became... And it wouldn't help Australia either. And you have uh, in Britain a situation where the pay is so bad and members of parliament are treated so badly that no one wants to be a member of parliament today. When I first entered the House 60 years ago as a young member of parliament, age 29, Members of Parliament were held in respect and were treated with some degree of almost awe. But nowadays, they are, are treated because of TikTok, because of social media, uh, because of the whole thing we now live in, uh, are treated, I would say, bad. And now I'm outside badly. Well, I wonder whether you're right about the pay being so bad. Maybe that explains why your poor Prime Minister had to go and uh, accept gifts of $100,000 so he could be uh, dressed in public. I mean, it's just its so extraordinary how low the standards have fallen. Well, uh, I think what happened there, and I've tried very hard to analyse it, is you suddenly got a group of Labour members of Parliament who've been out of power for 14 years, and one particular member of the House of Lords started lavishing gifts on them, including suits, spectacles, trips abroad, staying in wonderful hotels and penthouses. And I think they, they rather took to that. And uh, I can't 100% blame them. Uh, it took them by surprise. But if they'd had someone in charge at number 10 or earlier, they would have spotted it and said, you can't do that. The public may not understand which missiles are going from uh, Israel into Iran or from Iran into Israel, but they do understand when someone accepts free suits, free trips, free holidays that they've never had before. 
I'll just take you up on uh, Donald Trump. I understand, totally uncouth, totally unpredictable. I hate his position on Ukraine, whether you'll actually do that if he wins office is another matter. But at least, at least the tyrants of this world are afraid of him. They wouldn't be afraid of Kamala Harris. So that's why I wonder why you have said that you'd actually vote for Kamala Harris if you were American. Because isn't that well, going to be a vote for America's decline? I'll answer that very honestly. Uh, I wouldn't have voted. I wouldn't vote for either Kamala Harris or uh, Donald Trump. I would have gone for Nikki Haley, the former governor of oh, North yeah. Carolina and ambassador to the United Nations. I thought she was a class act, and at last America would have a class president. Now, if you're asking the cruel question, who do I think, as an Englishman sitting on the outside, fascinated, will win, I'm bound to say, sitting here at this moment, I think Donald Trump will win. Well, it depends uh, on the other side of the spectrum. I fear he might lose, but uh, I, th I think you might be right. But uh, gee, it's going to be uh, it's going to be popcorn time on the night uh, watching the results come in. Now, let me tell you something about that, young man. Let me tell you something about that. November the fifth is the day, as you will remember. We've had only 27 days to go before the election. Watch carefully one particular thing almost everybody missed at the last election. When the ballot closes, it looked as if Trump had beaten Biden. But it's the postal vote that matters nowadays, because the postal vote is two-thirds of the vote. So I'm warning you Australians, when you see the result and they give you at the end, as they always do, the result after the polls have closed, watch it carefully, because it may not be the result. You will have to wait for the postal ballot before you know who is the next president of the United States. I suspect you're right, although this time it won't be held in the COVID pandemic, so... Uh... There may be more people who would uh, not be voting uh, by mail. Uh, we will yet to see. But your own government, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen one that became so unpopular in just 100 oh, days. I mean, have you seen that before? Well, do you know, when Tony Blair won the election, he went into the first year with a plus 49% popularity. And our conservative uh, leader uh, uh, couldn't said he couldn't lay a glove on him because he was so popular. This present prime minister went in about 4% popular, despite winning by over 100. He then fell to minus 16. He's now minus 30 after only six weeks. <laughs> the answer to your question is, I've never known anything like it. Lord Archer, thank you so much indeed for your time. I really love that. And viewers, An Eye for an Eye is available now in all good bookshops. And you know my favourite is Robinson's Books. You go to the website, you look at the top left of the screen, and there you will see my recommendations. What are you... Fun man to talk to. He says he'll come back for the US election to talk to us here. Let's hope. Also, on that Robinson Bookshop website, you can see all my past recommendations too. So, have a check it out.